Hello, hello. Um, as was mentioned, my name is Aaron Koblen. Um, I work at Google's Creative Lab here in San Francisco. And in addition to that, I'm also an artist, hacker, programmer who's been making a number of different uh, software arts, uh, particularly focused on data visualization. Um, the software that I, attempt to, uh, that I create is an attempt to transform the uh, abundance of data that's being collected everywhere into sounds and images that reflect some of the surrounding context. So I'm going to try to explain what I mean by that um, through a few slides of some of the artwork I've been working on. And then I'm going to give an overview of a nonprofit organization that a few um, artist, designer, programmer friends of mine have begun to put together here in San Francisco. So this is a project that I created uh, a while ago called Flight Patterns. And this is actually looking at air traffic over North America. Um, I think it's one thing to say that there's 140,000 planes over the US in a 24-hour period. But it's another thing to see the system as it ebbs and flows and reveals the superstructure of politics, population, and geography. So what you're seeing right now is uh, the red-eye flights blooming from east coast to west. And this animation was part of an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Um, at the exhibition, I also worked with a group at MIT called the Sensible Cities Lab to create this project, which is visualizing communications infrastructure um, as seen through long-distance phone calls as well as in, uh, internet traffic. And we were specifically interested in seeing the ways that New York communicates with the rest of the world, and it's led to some really uh, interesting ongoing research at MIT drilling down into um, boroughs and specific subsections of boroughs and seeing how those sections are communicating with the rest of the world. Um, also with the Sensible Cities Lab, I worked on a project visualizing SMS messages being sent in the city of Amsterdam. So this is an interactive tool that I wrote. Um, it, it allows you to look at who's sending SMS messages where. Um, and it, again, you see the ebb and flow. You can see um, the system. But here you have social data. Uh, what you just witnessed was New Year's Eve. So you can actually see everybody freaking out and sending messages to everyone they know. Uh, I think it's really interesting because visualization has both the power to show economic and infrastructural data, but also very cultural and social events that are really relevant to our lives. Uh, prior to working at Google, I worked at a place called the Center for Embedded Network Sensing at uh, UCLA, led by Deborah Estrin, who's about to speak. It was an awesome experience. I was writing software to visualize laser scanners. Um, and to make a, a long, uh, some of the images look like this, um, sending robots th through scenes, actually getting point data and creating 3D geometry. To make a long story short, uh, I used this process with a director in LA named James Frost to create a music video for Radiohead. And we basically created a video without video, where we were um, just taking 3D point data and rendering that out um, in a lot of interesting ways. But not only was it us that was rendering out in interesting ways, we put this online as a Google Code project and actually launched the project through Google Code as an open source project that people could download all the data for and re-render and remix uh, for themselves. There's also uh, a YouTube group with all the content that people have been creating, and it's really exciting to see. More recently at Google, I've helped to launch a website called Chrome Experiments. And it's basically a gallery for all kinds of demos, games, hacks, things that you may not have realized could be done in a browser, uh, especially not without custom plugins. Um, and extensions. I think the, the power of JavaScript and HTML5 is really exciting. And it's really fascinating to see the types of creative demos that uh, come from innovation driven by experiment, uh, experimentation, curiosity, and fun, which I think are really important motivations that we shouldn't uh, lose track of. So why am I here telling you all this? Uh, this conference asks what's happening now and, and different in the web. And the way I see it, what's happening now is ambient data. It's everywhere. It's growing faster even than the conversation on the web. Some call it the Internet of Things. Some call it sensible cities, uh, or even the real-time web squared. But nothing in our lives uh, won't be instrumented or reported on. And I think it's really uh, important that we keep in mind the social and cultural ramifications of this. Um, so I, I think the implications of, of social, social and cultural uh, aspects of the industry are huge. And it's a story that goes well beyond the web. Um, and I think that's why a number of us in the Bay Area have come together to create an organization that's uniquely focused on digital arts and culture. So John told us he loves news, so I'm delighted to present to you the Gray Area Foundation for the Arts. Uh, it's the newest member of San Francisco's global cultural art scene, and it's a place uniquely focused on a uh, story of digital arts and culture. Gray Area specifically is a collection of artist studios and gallery, uh, gallery spaces situated in San Francisco's Tenderloin District. Uh, it's an area that's currently lacking in positive creative outlets, uh, and a very, it's a very exciting space. Uh, our inaugural exhibition titled Open, Open uh, features work from three influential contributors. I'm just going to talk about them briefly. First, uh, Casey Reese is the co-founder of a popular programming language called Processing, which I end up using in a lot of the work that I do. Um, he's also the chair of the Design Media Arts Department at UCLA. And he creates amazing uh, artwork for, uh, based off biological algorithms, so generating all kinds of interesting patterns uh, through this process experimentation. 
Uh, in addition, Camille Uderbeck is also on exhibition, uh, and she's an artist working with large-scale projection and interactive environmental art. Um, she's taught at NYU's Interactive Telecommunications Program and continues to teach workshops. Uh, she also just received the MacArthur Fellowship. Uh, last but definitely not least, San Francisco's Stamen Design, who created crimespotting.org and capspotting.org, is showing a bunch of their data visualization work. Uh, specifically projects about the Tenderloin, emphasizing the value of open data in Government 2.0. Uh, in addition to the exhibitions, GAFTA also hosts, hosts workshops and discussions. Um, this is a shot of the recent processing workshop that we had on graphics programming. And I think it's particularly worth noting that uh, the, the sold out workshop was comprised of a variety of individuals from different industries with tons of different interests. Um, and you, you see the, a wide variety of ex really exciting projects coming from workshops like this that are uh, all, all being led by community. And finally, downstairs we've set up um, a couple uh, kiosks and one of which is running the first community project called Sequence. This is just a quick demo of it, but it's an interesting idea. It's basically um, the web, web 2.0 kind of themes interwoven with the art community. So you're able to create these small beat patterns, which then in turn create these life forms that get added to this uh, growing sea of community uh, contributions. If you get a chance to check it out, I, I recommend it. So that's Gafton in a nutshell. Uh, one of our next big projects at GAFTA will be to deep dive into the theme of data, visualization, and cities. Um, what the real-time real web and ambient data means for art, government, and culture. And I think we see a, a big opportunity for participation with many of you, uh, both as supporters of GAFTA and also to help us tell the story of the world that we're changing. So for more information, please check out GAFTA.org, uh, the display kiosks downstairs, and please feel free to find uh, Josette Melcher or Peter Hirschberg or myself to have a conversation. Uh, thank you very much for your time.